Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? And welcome back to some more AFL 23 here today on the channel. We have season two, episode three of my management coach career series. Here today, first up, we've got a match against the Greater Western Sydney Giants. After five games played, we've won two, we've lost three. We currently sit in 16th place. However, it's still incredibly early days in this career series. Richmond are now first, Melbourne in second, the Cats third, the Crows fourth, the Suns in fifth. Adelaide in 6th, that's Port Adelaide, Collingwood in 7th, and the Swans in 8th. Last season, we of course won the Premiership and the Minor Premiership, so there's been a slight slump in form. We've got plenty of goals for, but we do concede nearly double um, what the AI concedes, so they do need to fix that. Uh, Hoskin Elliott is currently the top goal scorer of the comp, followed by our Jack Gunston. Danaher with four as well, and Ollie Wines up there with the disposals, coming second in the Brownlow last year. But here we go, Norwood Oval, gather round, let's face the Giants. We're in Adelaide, of course, and it's interesting that gather round is actually in season two of this career series. I'm surprised they did that, but I guess it's meant to be there for the next couple of years, isn't it? They bought the rights. But anyway, let's get stuck into the Giants. Away in Adelaide. Let's go with our brand new signings. Simpkin gets dropped. Trying to ultimately find Ben King. Ben, ben King. And we've got Sicily in the back line. But here we go. McCluggage on the breakaway. Winds up just inside the 50. What a goal. Did he score that first goal? In real life? I can't remember. He might have. But that's a massive goal there by McCluggage. To get things started here in Adelaide. What a goal. Still fighting for that top eight. I would love to get top four, but... Sendings is nearly a coin toss in winning matches. It's going to be a lot harder this season. We're a year older. We're a year slower. And we're nearly transitioning the team. I feel like under Fagan for the last couple of years probably bottled a premiership. But now we're going to have to create the next Lion Dynasty as the Giants get one back here, though. Interesting ball. They have Sam Draper in the ruck, which is kind of weird. <laughs> they signed him from the Bombers. Interesting ball in. McCarthy's in the defense. Why? I might need to turn that off. Automatic interchange can be a little bit weird. Oh, nearly gets that in. It's an interesting kick of the footy. Sicily to bring it out. Oh, no way. He released that, man. Coleman, get it out. Oh, dude. Sometimes the tackling the AI of the AI is so insane. I feel like they get so much time... Compared to what we do. Ah, and the Giants get another one there. First quarter. Hmm. We just look a little bit slow and off it, to be honest. We look just a little bit weird around the contest. As the Giants line up for number three. Bang smack in front. Good goal. Looks a little bit weird. Norwood. I'm not going to lie. Compared to real life. But the Giants... Are winning here at the moment. Need a switch on. Can we get one last late goal here? Stasevich hammers it into midfield. Good grab. 17 seconds remaining. Has to play it quick. Danaher bombs it into the 50. A pack... Creates and Jack Gunston, the former Crow, back in South Australia, his old stomping ground. I actually don't know who he played for in South Australia. He could have very well been in and around the Norwood area, but gets the goal, brings it back within a one goal game at quarter time. And after the Giants looking the better of the two. The lines come back somehow. Yeah, it just says balance on the ball. Like, board, for example, 
Like, if we're winning by, like, two, three goals narrowly in the fourth quarter, why would we stay on a balanced stance? You would park the bus and just try and defend. Yeah, they need to fix that, because I think that's what's going on. We, are, we concede and we're so open because of our tactics. Like, why is there four free Giants players at the back there? Kind of ridiculous. Starsevich, though, did all right. Hit the post there somehow. Sicily. Trying to bring it out from the back line. Trying to find McInerney. The big Ruckman can't get to it. It's ultimately spoiled and Bailey wins it. He gives it and goes. On the attack. How's he marked that with the flight of the footy? McInerney. Oh, good spoil. Gets it to ground. That's what you got to do now in this update. Cameron finds McInerney. The big O winds up to King. It's Gunston in the end. And he looks to levels things up goal-wise, potentially, to bring it back within a two-point game. Jack Gunston clinically finishes it. And it's a two-goal game. The 31-year-old now. Going to be 32 soon. 88 rated. Do we look to move on? Jack Gunston. He's still so good, but already Zorko's overall rating is rocketing down. I really should have got rid of him, to be honest, and maybe tried to trade with picks. However, that's something as well. They need to rework that. Like, for example, I'm sure in their last season, someone like the Suns would probably take Zorko for picks. Or maybe it's autoed in. I don't know. Like, what do you do when you want to move on a player? Do you just let him rot away on the bench until he retires? I don't know. You trade him for picks. That's what you do in AFL Evo. Oh, big tackle there. But, um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Players you'd like me to sign for Season 3. There's no harm in getting those in. Because we will be moving on players. There's still a lot of old players at the club. Like... Dare I say it, but Lockie Neal will retire at some point. He's 29. He's going to be 30 soon. Players start to go down rapidly when they hit sort of 31. So he's only got a couple years left at the club, ultimately. We're going to have to eventually think with life without Lockie Neal. However, bringing in Simkin, he's 25 at 90 rated. He'll be a decent replacement. But I feel like... Yeah, do we go with draft picks? Do we try and get a Petrarca or an Oliver? I don't know. Same with, like, the forward line. When we move on Gunston and Danaher, do you go out and get, like, a Lacocious or something? I don't know. We've already gone out and got Ben King. but I think targeting players that are sort of interstate or the lower teams. Like, for example, I think it's realistic that Brisbane would snipe Gold Coast talent. Um... And maybe a team like North Melbourne as well, who aren't the biggest club. But the Giants look good in this match in the third term. They're creating some good footy. They've got a bunch of young players that have now had a season to improve. And they've still got club stowarts like Jesse Hogan. He's going to line up and make it a three-goal game against the Lions. 40 points. Jesse Hogan puts his name on the score sheet. And it's going to be a big comeback for the Lions in the third if we are to. Ball up. In Norwood. In South Australia. The Lions look shaky. Berry gets brought to ground. Back in the ruck. Time's dwindling away. McCluggage, who started off this match with the first goal. He gets another for the Lions. Those free... So, sort of those free-flowing attacks in the forward 50 seem to come off like more accurate, which is great to see, because they weren't always the most accurate. Oh, here we go. Can we got a chance here? Oh, spoiled. Whoa, that's a buck. Uh, the Giants are probably going to seal the deal here. 
for number seven. I do think the AI's goal kicking has got significantly better as well. And the Giants for number seven, as I say... Oh, I was going to say that nearly missed, but it came back. <laughs> it would have been fitting if I said it's improved and uh, they were to ultimately miss, I suppose. But uh, disappointing from the Lions... Gold Coast and the Giants. Why is there a tree there? <laughs> two of the new expansion clubs. The Giants being the better of the two, I'd say, making that final. It's crazy that they made a, a grand final <laughs> when you think about it. All right. Yeah, disappointing. Barry played well. Neil. Gunston, probably not so much. Uh, Neil probably had a weird game. All right, moving on now, round seven. We sit in 16th. We face Carlton down in Melbourne. We're going to be playing at Docklands. So these losses are adding up. We need a win soon. All right, and we'll play in the away kit. All right, let's get stuck into the Blues. Carlton, I don't know what's going on with them in real life. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't actually make finals this year. But uh, here we go. Interesting handball. The Blues win it out. Somehow release the footy. Only as far as McInerney. Rayner. Oh. Turns. Hits it. King. Oh. Oh. It's okay because it got <laughs> spoiled ultimately. Only as far as Bailey. He goes bang. And that's something special there from the Lions. One goal up. Carlton go forward. Big spoil there. But it like the thing is, we win that spoil. We win the two spoils, but they somehow score. That is ridiculous. That's like unfair. You win two spoils perfectly timed because you can't mark anymore, but it favorably falls to a Carlton player. That is ridiculous. Like I get, I get the fact that you want people not to mark as much, but you've got to be rewarded for spoiling. All right, King wins it back. But at the moment, if this continues, it's not about who can defend better. It's whoever can outscore the opposition. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the hard and hardest difficulty. It is an interesting game change, though. That's the main thing I've sort of seen within the community. People have gotten used to that sort of early week thinking they can mark absolutely everything if they perfectly time it. But even if you perfectly time it now, it's pretty much a, a 9 out of 10 that you're not going to get the mark. You need to spoil a lot more. Dunkley going. Good handball. Cameron. I do quite like that it's these type of goals now that are a lot open that you can score. They've opened that side of the footy because I, I do think that the kick-to-kick um, set shot can get a little bit boring. So the gameplay has changed quite a bit. But it is it is hard to adjust to you, the style of playing. Because from day to day, with the patches, stuff gets changed. And stuff that was working yesterday, or you get exposed in a weird area. But I'm curious to see where this game is in a couple months time. I still think I'm getting tackled probably a bit more. But I'm, I'm still not going to stop recording and wait for updates. I want to keep playing. Because I run so many YouTube channels, I can't afford to. Otherwise, basically just can't upload this game. McCarthy with a good goal, though. Like, we're doing all right. We're winning, but we're losing, and we're just conceding a lot. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Uh, where we end up, because this is like a proper career series. We had the Heights. We've won a premiership. We've won the minor. Now this is a, a proper hard career series now. Sicily looking to bring it out. Does well. Straight down the corridor. Danaher spoiling. Simpkin trying to pick it up. Danaher gets it. He's got so much room there. Takes a bounce. Oh, come off it. McInerney now, though. He's got a lot of space. Why is there so much room here? The big O winds up. Goes for goal. Because it's actually risky going for the contest. 
he puts his name on the score sheet. And this would be a massive scalp down in Marvel. Down in Docklands. Second quarter. Some good handballs. Oh, Zorko went up for the spoil. Couldn't get to it. Ball in. Sicily nearly wins it. And the Blues looking to score their second goal of the match. He gets the goal. It's a three goal game. You wouldn't put the Blues or the AI coming back in this one. You wouldn't put it out of mind. Second quarter. Blues chipping it and handballing it about. Well, good interception. Yeah, just the tackles, man. Oh, good pickup dunks. Oh, dude, look how much we're just getting, like, hunted, man. Danaher. Good goal. We are scoring, <laughs> but it's like, we just got to outscore. <laughs> you just got to kick goals. Our forward line is carrying us this season. As we go again. Neil turns. King, come on, win it. Oh, Gunston in the end won it. What a pickup. Bring in Jack. In real life, a little bit of a slow start. He goes back for number seven. Bang. What a magnificent goal from a magnificent footballer. Jack Gunston, number seven. Here we go. We're putting on a master class here. It's a beautiful game of footy here down in Docklands. Lions by five over the Blues. Third quarter now. Big O goes up, beats Cripper. Dunkley gets brought to ground. And it's going to be a ball up. The Big O goes again. He wins it this time. Only as far as Dunks, who gets dropped. I do feel like the crunching tackle sometimes. Like, you basically don't have any opportunity to get it out. Oh, good on you, Barry. Somehow hit that. On as far as Gunston to Bailey. Good goal in the end, ultimately. Six we lead by. The Blues trying to bring it out from their back line. How far have they fallen? Interesting ball. Come on. Lester. Oh. Alright, the Blues get their third goal. Hmm. Still plenty of time to come back in this. We lead by 27 in the Mitch Robinson derby. <laughs> I'm surprised you can't pick him up as a free agent or a, um, a delisted player. That would have been quite fun. Oh, wow. We just let Carlton sa sail into that one. All right, full goal lead. Fourth quarter now. We've done enough. The Blues looking for their fifth. They're not going to be able to get it in the turnover. My God, Jack Gunston with the clinical finish. That's game, set, match, you'd think. Number nine for the Lions. Jack Gunston kicks the goal. No. The Blues might get one late here as they drive it into our D50. Ainsworth, someone get to it. Big punch. Only as far as a Carlton player. That's number five. So, it looks like just before the siren's going to go, a four goal victory for the Lions. Big win down at Docklands. That's going to really help our ladder position as Lockie Cowan has his hand over his face. The Tasmanian draft pick. Nearer the stats, 34-56 as we face the Tigers next week. So unfortunately on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Unfortunately, we lost to the Giants, but we did manage to redeem ourselves. 
with a good win over the Carlton Football Club. Only time will tell how they're going to do in real life. What do you reckon? Do you reckon they're going to make the top eight this season? Let me know in the comments. But like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Ben Simpsey, and I'll stay and I'll see you tomorrow for season two, episode four, coming out soon.